Sunken graves, towering grass, and a total neglect. This is the picture of most public cemeteries in Ghana. With these conditions of graveyards, how are people supposed to pay respect to their buried loved ones? I visited some cemeteries in Kumasi and Accra to see firsthand the shocking state cemeteries are in. Not just the cemeteries, some mortuaries are also in a horrifying state. When you hear the term, paying respect to the dead, it includes handling the deceased with dignity and respect. But that is lacking here. You are in medicine, you I want to show you this one. And take them, they are on their way. Death can be hard, but in Ghana, caring for the dead can make it even harder. Kumase is the Ashanti regional capital and the Tafu Cemetery is the biggest public cemetery one can find here. Some parts of the cemetery is so saturated with human remains that bones have been rising to the ground surface. Some two months ago, a mass burial was conducted here at the Tafo Cemetery. And this, you can see right here, is a human bone. This is not the only bone you will find here. If you walk around, the number of human bones that you will find here. This is really scary, but the workers in here will have to be seeing all these things while they try as much as they can to do their job, but they are paid meager salaries. It can get a bit scarier for some of the workers in here. What you can see in the pictures right now is a bone, and according to this man right here, is a tie of the person who was buried here. With diminishing resources and the ever-growing population, conservation is globally encouraging people to embrace recycling as a remedy. Grave diggers in Ghana have been forced to do it because space here is limited. The graveyard have been grossly neglected. Aside from the unkept grass litter, sunken and broken graves are almost synonymous across the grave sides. The image of neglect is camouflaged by the beauty of the grasses. The abandonment here is glaring. Yet, these grave diggers are busy at work. They are used to the situation here for over a decade of working as grave diggers. Salifu Abu. 52 years, has been working at the Tafo Cemetery since 1997. His colleague, 55-year-old Kweku Echampong, has also been working at the cemetery for the past 11 years. Their job is a strenuous and life-threatening one. Any little blunder here, and one is bound to contract infections from bones of the dead that has been buried for years. <coughs> they do not have the right protective gear to put on while working. This has also been worsened by poor working conditions. Employed under the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly, 
they are both paid a salary of 400 Ghana cities a month. But government still owes them some outstanding arrears. Our pay is very bad. The month has ended, but we haven't received any penny. We are paid 400 Ghana cities. This one, down, up to down, no people. Married with eight children, life hasn't been an easy one for Saleh Fouabou. He sometimes depends on loan, which is later deducted from his salary. What he takes home is not enough to feed him and his family for two days. Hey, say, hey, I'm God takes care of us. There is no one to lead us address our grievances. A man was willing to assist us follow up on our salaries, but our boss told him to stop, so the man got angry and left. Till date, nothing has been done about our situation. Most of us depend on loans. The mystery that comes with death, perhaps, makes grave diggers a mysterious group of professionals that many do not quite understand. As many of them will say, caring for the dead is a calling and is not a job for everyone. The fear of coming to close contact with corpses makes their job the least attractive, coupled with stigma and ridicule surrounding the occupation, unlike other professions where there's fierce competition. I am surrounded by graves here at the Tafo Cemetery in the Ashanti Regional Capital, Kumase. And this particular one that has been freshly dug is for a dead body, obviously. It should have been dug to about six feet. But as you can see, this particular one is on the knee level, which is about two feet. What are the reasons why they wouldn't have to dig deep down, but to leave it just at two feet? We'll find out more. The tenton is six feet. Okay. We don't dig down to six feet level. Block back, back, three and a half. In Ghana's capital, Accra, the Osu and the Awudome cemeteries are the biggest public cemeteries. These cemeteries have been full for several years, but bodies continue to arrive each day for burial. Two was frightening. This is a human skull, very scary. This old grave at the cemetery had just been opened and cleared, awaiting a new dead body. The death of the grave is questionable here, an answer I will be finding out soon. Just like Kwekwe Champong and Salif Wabu, Anthony Bayo, 44 years, has been operating as a grave digger at the Awudomu Cemetery for 15 years, employed under the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. It breaks his heart when it dawns on him he's being paid 350 Ghana cities monthly as salary. Oh, Kweku, and yet, pay the grandma more than seven months. 
We've not been paid for seven months now. Most of us do other jobs to survive. I am paid 350 cities a month. He mostly does side jobs to hold body and soul together. Oh, we have to be too some of us travel to work elsewhere when the opportunity comes. Acquiring a land here, according to Anthony, cost about 5,000 Ghana cities. The workers are not paid well. Where does the money go to? Just like the time that creeps by after saying the last goodbyes, so does the grass slowly swallowing up the edges of the gravestones. Once you step in deep, you are confronted with reeds pitching into your legs. I've seen it. Is that a snake? The inability to visit old graves because of safety has exposed the local authorities of failing to maintain the graves in a decent state. At the Osu Cemetery, the expression six feet under for the dead has not been practiced here for a very long time, according to some grave diggers. The land is full. Where I am standing in is a graveyard here, which is very expensive. If you're not well to do, you cannot afford a graveyard here. But one of the most important things that I've come to note at this particular premises is that a number of bodies have been buried here. There's not enough space and that is the reason why the graveyards here cannot go down to a six feet level. This is on my thigh level, not that deep. A number of bodies here have been buried on the same level. Wow, so this is the Osu Cemetery that I've been talking about for some time now and usually when you come to the cemetery it sort of creates some scare and people don't really have the courage to come in. Oh my, what? Did I just cave in? The grave just caved in. Can you imagine? It almost caved in. Director of Public Health at the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Florence Kuchi, is worried this could be dangerous. When you go to the cemetery and there are bones around, the, a grave is being dug and all those bones are being placed inside. For instance, when the bones become very old, they become like chalk. Let me put it in a layman, this thing, they become like chalk. When you step on it, it can cut you. So it's not supposed to be done, it is an eyesore. People who see it, it doesn't, it, it, it becomes nasty. Yeah. Yes, so it shouldn't be. The cemetery is also a human institution. Okay. Human beings are there. Okay. This is what you are supposed to do. Mm. Somebody is not doing his or her duty. Mm. It's not supposed to be like that. Mm. When you do recycling, all old bones that are out from the recycled grave yeah. are reburied mm. so that the place doesn't look nasty. You don't have to go to the cemetery and see bones around. Mm. It even bring bad mind to people. People say, we go to the cemetery to go and collect human bones and go and sell or what, what, what. It doesn't happen at the cemeteries. It shouldn't be. Every cemetery has a maturity period before you can recycle. For instance, it used to be 30 years. It came to 25. It came to 20. Now, Stocks are in place, it's even coming down to 15. So after 15 years, it will be recycled, then old graves will be reused again. You don't have to go out looking for land because getting a land in the city is not easy. Though it's not, the PPEs are not enough, we are trying as much as possible to ensure that each of them have 
the standard or the needed PPEs that they are supposed to use to work. They have complained and we've taken it to management. That is why I'm saying management is working on it. She said money generated from the cemetery is huge, but where it goes to is beyond her office. The money goes to the district assembly's coffers because that is where the money is being paid to. A lot of revenue is being generated from the cemeteries, but how many people even give out monies for the cemeteries to be taken care of? Every cemetery should have been, let me say, well demarcated. We have where vaults are being built, areas where we use only headstones, and areas where we do just ordinary barrier. And that is what should have happened. But that is not what we are seeing. When you come to Aoudomi Cemetery, it has become a hub of criminals, criminal activities, especially when it is getting to the night. That is where people come to hide and snatch people's bags and other things. It's because security is not much given to the place. Income should be used to maintain the cemetery so that they, it will advertise itself. People want to bury their loved one at places that are beautiful. Nobody wants to throw their loved one anyway. So assemblies should see cemeteries as a lasting place for everybody. There's no nationwide rule that says graves must be six feet deep. But health experts say six feet is a matter of safety to prevent situations like these, which can create a public health crisis. While the public section is sick with poor maintenance, the private section is well maintained. The image here is different. The grass has been cut and the path to each grave is an unchallenging walk. Most tombstones are tidy and intact with flowers and decorative stones over them. This is a private cemetery somewhere around East Ligon in Accra, which many people describe as serene and beautiful. The vegetation alone is very satisfying when you come in here. But when you compare this to what you see in the public cemeteries, it is quite different. This grave digger here has been here obviously for a number of hours and you can clearly tell the depth of this particular grave that has been dug. You've already seen what the public cemeteries do. And when you compare this to that, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Reverend Banister Tay as the head of operations at Transitions, a private funeral management which offers funeral arrangements for the dead with the provision of all funeral necessities. He believes a life well lived must be kept at a serene place. It is very important for one to bury uh, his loved one in a very beautiful place, a very unique place because, I mean, a life lived must be actually treated well. This is somebody who has actually lived well, I mean, supported a home, and unfortunately passed on. We need to actually lead him at a place that is so unique so that in, case, in the future, we can always pay our respect, visit as per our culture. You know, people always want to visit their beloved who pass on. We celebrate the first anniversary to the extent that people celebrate a uh, 10th anniversary and so and so forth. And they go to those sites to drop a flower. It's a sign of love and a sign of respect to their loved one who passed away. So I believe that we should not just lay them anywhere. The scare in public cemeteries mostly pushes people away. Some cemeteries, when you go, they make the place so scary. And these people are not ready to go there. You know that thing that is attached to death? They don't want to go there. As compared to some private cemeteries, the place is not scary at all. It's well structured. They, and some, some of them you enter before you get to know that it is a cemetery. If the dead could talk, walk and make demands, they would have fought for a better resting place after life and protested over the terrible state 
of their eternal resting place. However, they are helpless and those whose duties it is to ensure these cemeteries are in good condition appear indifferent. Boldly written are the entrances of most of these cemeteries. Remember, we were like you. And when you're exiting, remember, you will be back. Reminds us death is inevitable. But the thought of how you will be handled and where you will be kept at the end of your life can be traumatizing. A reason why attention should be drawn to these cemeteries to avoid unwanted calamities to visitors and workers and to give the dead a befitting resting place. Godwin Asideba, TV3. Hey! <laughs>